Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the topic I have chosen today, money and power in ancient Bactria, deals well with one of my main fields of research. Uh, when I started to think about the topic, I wanted to, to give you an overview from the earliest times of coinage in Bac Bactria, that is in the Achaemenid period down uh, to the Islamic conquest. But the, when I f finished this uh, in a rough overview, I, I realized it's much too long. So <laughs> I decided just uh, to stop uh, with uh, the end of the Kushan Empire. So give you a rough o overview, let's say, of approximately from uh, s uh, 500 BC uh, to uh, three, 300 AD. That's still quite a long uh, time. Well, now, uh, in what is today northern Afghanistan, uh, lay the ancient territory of Bactria. To the south, it was bounded, I need my think, um, uh, to the south it was bounded by the mountain ranges of the Hindu Kush called Paropamisos by the Greeks, while to the north it extended beyond the river Amudarya, the ancient Oxus, into southern Uzbekistan. Bactria was a fertile land, mainly based on artificial irrigation and had been settled since time immemorial. It formed a point of intersection between the steppes of Central Asia, Iran and India. Important lines of communication led from China via Bactria and uh, uh, to, the to the Iranian plateau and to Mesopotamia. Going south, routes led uh, over the Hindu Kush into the ancient provinces of Paropamisade, that's the area around Kabul and Be Begram, what we call Ka Kabulistan, and down the Khyber Pass to Gandhara and the northwest Indian lowlands, the Panchab. Uh, as numismatists, we are thinking of two major urban centers in Bactria, which housed also Minsk. That's on the one hand side Bactra, the capital Balkh, uh, which you find here. Uh, and the other one uh, is uh, the famous, that's, I think it's missing here on the map. It's in this area here. This is the famous uh, Hellenistic city of Iconum, which was excavated uh, by the French and uh, which was founded uh, maybe uh, by Seleucus the first. And in both of these pla places also mints were situated. Well, these regions had been part of the Achaemenid Empire since the 6th century. And it is during this uh, period that they first encountered coinage. Some of this was Greek silver coinage, in particular Athenian tetradrams, which arrived via channels of trade in Bactria, Kabulistan and Gandhara from the late 6th century onwards. The earliest hoard of Greek uh, coinage found in northeastern Iran is recorded from Kirk in modern Turkmenistan, uh, situated on the left bank of the Oxus River, right to the border of Bactria. Uh, it was published by jo Jonathan Kagan, and it contains archaic Greek silver coinage and closes in the last quarter of the 6th century. You see here a selection of these coins. Uh, the famous hoard uh, of Chamani Has Hasuri, also called the Kabul hoard, and the Balkh hoard are later and were deposited in the last quarter of the 5th century. Uh, they contain a cross-section of Greek coinage of the 5th century and here the Athenian tetradrums are already dominating. Uh, of special interest for us is the Kabul hoard uh, be because it contained silver coins that are today held to be the earliest struck in India. They were probably being produced by the local elites in Taxila as well as in other urban centers in Gandhara and Kabulistan by the 5th century. In their pictorial imagery, these coins partly uh, draw 
on models from the Greek world and partly and partly on models from the Achaemenid court art. For example, you see here a double-headed uh, capital as we have also in uh, Persepolis and the others are typical inspired by Greek coinage. Uh, the vast ma majority, however, display geometric motifs with flans in the form of bent bars. You see these coins here. Uh, the introduction of silver coinage in Kaburistan and Gandhara arose primarily, I think, from local needs, a circumstance that is evident in the external uh, from form and imagery of the new coinage. However, while familiarity with Greek coinage may have provided the impetus to introduce an Im independent currency, in the practical implementation it was the native Indian tra traditions that were adhered to. The Indian coinage tra tradition is characterized by a concept of continuity, maintaining the functionality of coinage like we, have found it, we, we find it in China, while the Western tra tradition emphasizes more on the authority who guarantees the functioning of coinage. Uh, the exact dating of these earliest Indian coins is still a matter of debate while Indian scholars surmises that they were already being struck in the late 7th century BC, Joe Kripp has put forward convincing arguments for dating them to the 5th century BC. But let us return uh, to, ba oops, to Bactria. Uh, here too, coinage seems to have started in the late Achaemenid era probably in the first half of the 4th century. The model for this coinage was provided by Athenian tetradrams based on the... No? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't want me. Look oh. there. <laughs> there <we go>. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the model is based on the new type introduced in Athens after the Pel Peloponnesian War in the 390s and then was imitated uh, by the Bactrian authorities. Uh, only the style and the legend Ike instead of Ate re reveals that it is not an original from Athens. So you have this is the coin. Uh, which was uh, found in the hoard, or is said to be found in, in the hoard of Chamani Hazuri. It's still in the holds of the Kabul Museum. This is another one type uh, uh, in the British mu Museum. Uh, the legend uh, Ike has been uh, associated with the Aigloi, who, according to Her Herodotus, formed the major population in Bactria at that time. According to Daniel Schlum Schlumberger, who published the, hoard, uh, the, the Kabul hoard, a coin of this type, exactly the, that one in the middle, was contained in the hoard uh, of Chamani Haz Hazuri. However, uh, to, to today, scholars consider this coin as intrusive and date the hoard, as already mentioned, to the late 5th century. Well, be that as it may, I am not a specialist uh, in this field, but I believe here uh, what uh, my co colleagues uh, told me. Uh, the fact uh, that the Bactrian nob nobility who occupied an elevated position within the Achaemenid Empire took the Athenian currency as their model was probably no accident, especially as this had become a kind of key car currency across the entire Eastern Mediterranean and beyond during the course uh, of the 5th century. And even the Achaemenid king of kings, Artaxerxes III, used this, especially this type of, of coinage after the recapture of Egypt in 343, and he was followed by his satraps Sabakis and Matsakis. 
Uh, the last Achaemenid satrap in Bactria was Bessus, who had uh, the Achaemenid king Darius III murdered and then claimed the Achaemenid throne for himself. However, Bessus was handed over to Alexander in 329 and executed. Bactria thus came under the dominion of the Macedonian king and was placed under the administration of a governor appointed by uh, Alexander. But as far as we know today, no coins were struck in Bactria during this time. Subsequently, the eastern part of Alexander's empire fell to Se Seleucus, who had been appointed governor of Babylonia after Alexander's death. From Babylon, starting around 308, Seleucus conquered almost the whole of eastern Iran, including Bactria, which he subjugated around 305 BC. I show you here one of these famous trophy coinage, uh, which probably co commemorates uh, Seleucus' victories in the <coughs> upper satrapies. It was struck in Susa. Uh, However, the power vacuum that has been created by Alexander's sudden death and the conflicts between his generals in parts of his empire may have prompted the seizure of power in Bactria by a certain Sophitus, pre presumably a member of the local nobility in Bactria. The last Greek satrap of Bactria known by name is Stasanor. He received his position in 320 at the partition of Triparadesos, at which uh, the division of power within Alexander's empire was decided by the Diodochi. Uh, but Stasano then disappeared from the historical record after 316. Uh, Sophitus' rule might fall thus exactly in this time span between 315 and 305, when Bactria was finally subjugated by Seleucus. Sophitus is known to us exclusively from his coinage, which consists partly of anonymous silver coins, you see them here, uh, that follow uh, the Athenian model, or in place of Diao, on the reverse display an eagle or falcon with caricaon and grapevine. Latterly, Sophitus even includes himself in the design. Here he wears an Attic hel helmet with cheek flaps uh, and on the reverse you see a cockerel and a caricaon. Here the cockerel, the caricaon and the name Sophitu here. The denominations include drams, half drams, diobols and obols based on a local weight standard. Finally, also tetradrams occur, you see the piece here, but the, these are oriented on the heavier attic standard. There is still the question if these tetradrams are really genuine. Maybe you know that also a uh, gold stator appeared and this seems to come from the same workshop like the famous Alexander uh, uh, Stater which a, a lot of debate arose on these coins and which I think is also uh, a fake. Well, uh, the coinage of Sophitus is remarkable in two respects. On the one hand, the unusually broad range of denominations based on the local weight standard which was initially also used by Seleucus I for his coinage in Bactria, uh, is surprising. Uh, this might indicate that the coinage of Sophitos was not purely a matter of prestige, but that the economic aspect also played a role in addition to the political component. The other no notable aspect is the surprising choice of Im imagery. The likeness of Sophitus, if the dating is correct, is among the earliest portraits of a ruler in Hellenistic coinage. But it is not only the portrait of Sophitus that is unique in its time. The cockerel on the reverse must also be regarded as a novelty in the Greco-Iranian influenced cultural environment of Bactria. 
in the context of the Greek pantheon, uh, the cockerel was as associated with Hermes, the messenger of the gods who always carries the golden herald's staff, the, the kerikeion, especially in his function as psychopompos, as conductor of the souls. Uh, but in the Iranian context too, the cockerel is a, Greek, is, is, is a frequent symbol. It was regarded as sacred by the Zoroastrians and occurs in Iranian art from the earliest times, also in Achaemenid art, for example. It is the companion of the god Srosh, the protector at night and dispeller of darkness, as well as messenger of the gods and conductor of the souls of the dead. So here we have a wonderful parallel also to Hermes. But sometimes uh, he's, uh, the, the cockerel is also understood as the sign of Farna, the divine glory bestowed upon the ruler. The image of the eagle or falcon is equally indigenous to both cultural spheres. For the Greeks, of course, it is a symbol of Zeus, father of the gods, and is also associated sometimes with Hermes. For the Iranians, the falcon or Veragna bird that brings the divine glory of a ruler, uh, the cockerel is a symbol of Farna, which distinguished the person to whom the gods had entrusted the, 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 the dominion on earth. Thus it would seem that the imagery on the coinage of Sophutus re reveals a subtle dialogue going on between Greek Hellenistic and Iranian pictorial tra traditions. In keeping with the fashion of his times, Sophitus presents himself as entirely receptive to Hellenism, but for the legitimization for his rule, he also made use of symbols that would have been understood in his Iranian environment. Greek beliefs had found their way into Central Asia and Iran at the very latest by Alexander the Great's conquest of the Achaemenid Empire. For the new Greek elite in Bactria, re religion as well as the Greek language were major factors in the, in the establishment of their identity. The iconography of Greek gods they had brought with them from their native lands was rapidly disseminated, not least uh, through the medium of coinage, and was eventually integrated into the imagery of local cults by indigenous pop population. Images of Greek gods and their attributes were used to present non-Greek gods, a process that sometimes led to very different beliefs being concealed behind an originally purely Greek image of a god. A good example I show you here is Heracles, whose cult is not only closely associated with Alexander the Great, but who also occurs in Iranian Zoroastrianism as the god of victory, Veritragna, uh, and in Buddhism as Vajrapani, and in Hinduism as Shiva and Krishna. Just two examples I show you here. Here you have a, tet of a tetradrama of Mithridates I on the, the reverse you see Heracles and this type was uh, struck in 142-1 uh, after Mith Mithridates has conquered Seleucia on the Tigris and here you have Heracles as Veritragna. And the similar uh, uh, example you have here if you look just a short glimpse, uh, it's like a tüche, but if you look closer, you see <coughs> it's a man, he wears a beard, and this is uh, Ishtar in Mesopotamia, which is also the same like Nanayad, the goddess uh, in Bactria. So we have always be careful when we interpret such I images. Uh, a brief aside, yes, here just another ex ex example from the Buddhist sphere. You see here this f famous octodrum of Euthydemus I with Heracles sitting on the rock, and then you see the transformation of this uh, into the Buddhist art of Hada, uh, of this uh, stupa in Tepishotor, where you see also Heracles as Vajrapani with the Vajra instead of the club. 
Uh, a brief aside on the name Sophutus. It is held to be the Greek transcription of the old Indo-Aryan name Subuti. Uh, in this connection, a Greek inscription should be mentioned, which was allegedly dis discovered near Kandahar, that's in southern Afghanistan, in the ancient province of Arachosia. Uh, it comes from the tomb of a funeral epigram uh, of a wealthy merchant uh, who also bore the name Sophutus and probably dates to the first half of the second century BC. The inscription relates to the life of Sophutus and demonstrates that already deep degree of Hellenization in Eastern Ir I Iran at that time. Uh, at this time, Arachosia was already ruled uh, by the Greco-Bactrian kings who had declared their independence from the Seleucid Empire around 250 BC and at the beginning of the second century had already extended their sphere of control from Bactria via the Hindu Kush uh, to Arachosia and Northwest India. Apart from the name the Sophutus of the inscription has nothing in common with the Sophutus of the coins. Moreover, according to current knowledge, the coinage of Sophutus never spread south of the Hindu Kush in Arachosia. This is backed up by the finds of Sophutus coinage, which are concentrated only to the north of the Hindu Kush. A hoard of 48 coins allegedly found near Bactra and one dram of the Athena eagle type you have seen before was found during the excavations in Afrasiab in Samarkand. At all events, Sophutus' rule, uh, rule in Bactria was only of brief duration and with the consolidation of Seleucid power in eastern I Iran, all Iranian influence in official imagery of the coinage came to a halt. Uh, it is highly remarkable that neither the Seleucids nor the Greek kings who succeeded them in Bactria paid or had to pay much need to the indigenous Iranian culture uh, with its important Zoroastrian tra tradition, especially as the local no nobility for their part evinced a quite a great uh, openness towards Greek culture. However, uh, besides the Greek, strong Greek tra 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 traditions, uh, Zoroastrianism formed still a dominating element in the religious life of the Bactrian people. Uh, this is also proved, for example, by archaeological e evidence. The French archaeologists found in Iconum a platform built uh, to the southwest of the Acropolis of Iconum, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, a, a platform which is clearly connected with ir Iranian cult practices. You see here a reconstruction of Iconum uh, with this uh, plat platform here. This, at this site. Uh, contrasting with this, as we shall see, is the situation in India where the Greek kings display an openness to, towards the local culture which is also articulated in their coinage. When Diodotos, uh, the Seleucid satrap of Bactria, declared independence from his overlord Antiochus II sec after or around 250 and founded an independent kingdom in Bactria, the Seleucid currency system based on the Attic standard was continued. Only the visual language of the coins became, let's say, a little bit more lively and especially the portraits of the Greco-Bactrian kings are among the most magnificent of the Hellenistic area. Uh, in 2000, a hoard of about 1,000 gold status of Diodotos was found near Visali. That's a little village in the middle valley of the, of the Ganges River, not far from Patna in Bihar. The coins most probably were imported as gold ingots uh, to that at that time blossoming Mauryan Empire under King Ashoka. 
Bactra was certainly a central hub north of the Hindu Kush through which important trade routes led from Central Asia to India. Most of these coins, I show you here, one of these uh, from this partner hoard have these test cuts here and um, you can recognize them easily. Uh, Demetrius I, the son of uh, Eutidemus, who had overthrown the Diodoti, was the first to cross the Hindu Kush and to come into closer contact with Indian culture. The incursion into India by Demetrius is, is, is assumed to mark the beginning of a new era in Gandhara with the start of a new time reckoning as of the year 186 uh, and is referred to as the Greek, the Yavana era. Now, nowadays it's shif shifted 10 years later to 175, but I'm not so sure if this is correct. Uh, from the reign of Apollodotos I uh, onwards, the coins struck in Gandhara and Panchap bear bilingual inscriptions in Greek on the obverse and Gandhari in the Karosh script on the reverse. Uh, coinage was also converted to the Indian weight system and s uh, some smaller silver and copper denominations were struck on square flans after the model of the punch marked coins. You see here one of these punch marked coins of the Maurya emperors and then uh, the uh, silver drums of Apollodotos uh, I. Uh, by contrast, the pictorial repertoire remained more or less purely uh, Greek in character, apart from the inclusion of the elephant and the Cebu uh, animals, which are clearly associated, of course, uh, with India. Uh, only Agathocles and Pantaleon uh, ventured a brief excursion into the Indian pantheon. Uh, of extra the extraordinary importance here is an issue of a large hoard of punch marked coins which was found in Aikanum. Uh, this hoard also contained six uh, of these square Indian weight drams showing on the obverse the image of a Hindu god uh, Samkarsana and on the reverse the image of Vasudeva Krishna. Also, these coins are bi bilingual. However, they use not uh, the Karoshti script, but the Brahmi script here on the reverse. Uh, the iconography now is really astonishing. Uh, it's a witness to a formative stage of Brahmanical pram visual imagery of which we have very, very scanty evidence. Uh, in the second century BC, we can observe that the first extant uh, e evidence of Brahmanical temples and the process started, which marked the transition from the aniconism of the Vedic tra tradition, where we also have no images of gods, but also no permanent cultic uh, spaces, uh, to, the, to the then very rich iconographic uh, repertoires of both Buddhism and Brahmanism. So you must imagine when these coins appeared uh, in official Indian art, these images did not exist. Uh, it's, it's, it's really strange how to explain how these images were cre created by Ag Agathocles uh, for his coinage. Um, it is most likely that the circulation of Western iconographies and the necessity of competing somehow with alien models gave a boost to such a process, which is also supported by the political uh, pa panoramas at that time. Big empires <coughs> transformed the traditional uh, chiefdoms in trans-regional and transnational entities, thus requiring a kind of international system of communication and re religious iconographies and <coughs> architectures are part of this uh, process. Uh, another interesting glimpse uh, on the interchange among the Greeks and the Indians uh, is provided by the onomastic evidence. Here Harifalk has demonstrated uh, that the contact between the Greek ruling classes and the local Indian 
elite seems to have increased in intensity from the second century onwards. Indian families gave their children Greek names and conversely Indian names also made their way into Greek families. But also Iranian influence is still prevalent. Uh, this is demonstrated by the coins of Nashten, you see him here, mm -hmm. son of Chatran, uh, who might have been an Iranian condottiere, we can say, perhaps from Bactria, and had fetched up in India after the middle of the first century BC. He came to power in Punjab during the struggle uh, between the last Indo-Greek kings with the Indo-Scythians under Aziz I. The Iranian name of Nashten's father uh, is attested, and that's the interesting point, in inscriptions on vases found in Iconome, published by Paul Bernard. Uh, going back to Bactria, the coins minted in Bactria bore exclusively Greek inscriptions, and the Attic weight standard was retained. The finds made here to, to, to date would seem to indicate that at this time Bactria was a more or less cohesive currency area in which the local Attic currency circulated intermixed with earlier coinage from the Seleucid era. A pot shirt, you see it here on the right hand side, from a jar used for storing silver coins found in the treasury of the palace at Aichanum bears the des designation legal silver currency, probably referring to coins issued on the At Attic standard. An exception to this is a hoard concealed at Aichanum containing 677 Indian punch-marked coins, you have seen them be before, together with the aforementioned six bilingual drams of Agathocles from Taxila. These coins seem to have been skimmed off uh, from circulation south of the Hindu Kush within a short space of time and transferred to Bactria. Claude Rapin has linked this hoard to the Indian campaign of Eucratides I. As, alre as al already mentioned, uh, south of the, hin of the Hindu Kush, it is the lighter coins issued on the Indian standard that predominate. However, in Kaburistan and in the western parts of Gandhara, uh, at the borders to Bactria, the Indo-Greek kings also issued silver coins struck on the Attic standard, including, for example, the famous 20 gold stator uh, of Eucratidis, now in the Bibliothèque Nas Nationale, and the uh, 20 drums silver pieces of Amyntas. These are the largest gold and silver coins known in ancient times. The silver decadram in the middle uh, uh, was part of the hoard of Kishtepe in Bactria, that's approximately 90 kilometers away from Kunduz, um, and uh, the found spot lay on the southern shore of the Amudaya River. Uh, it is assumed that, this that these coins, some of which were pro produced alongside Indian currency uh, in one and the same mint, were used in particular for tribute payments to the nomads who had conquered Bactria after the death of Eucratides I around 145. Uh, the murder of U Eucratides happened in connection with a fundamental event that led to the complete collapse of Greek do dominion in Bactria. Around 145 Scythian mounted nomads from Central Asia attacked Eastern Bactria, referred to in Chinese annals as Sai or Sai Wang, and in Western sources as Sakai, uh, Sakaraukai or Scutai thus ending the reign of the Greek kings. In the course of this overwhelming attack by the nomads, Aichanum was plundered and given up by the Greek pop population that fled to western Bactria. The conquerors 
immediately started smelting the gold and silver they found in the treasuries of Iconum on site uh, in these gold bars. You see some of these pieces which were found during the excavations. However, the Sai uh, did not last long in eastern Bactria, but were displaced around 129-128 uh, by the following Yue Qi, the later Kushan from Tokharistan. They retreated to the west and conquered western Bactria with the capital Bactra of the last reigning Greek king Heliocles I, thus ending an almost 200-year Greek reign in Central Asia. With the conquest of Bactria by the Uechi, coin production also came to an end for the time being. However, the amount of coinage in circulation seems to have been sufficient to cover the economic needs of the remaining population. In the long term, however, it became of course necessary for the new overlords to start production of their own coinage, especially as they were intending to settle permanently in Bactria and were thus forced to take control of the administration within the context of their sovereign rights they had appropriated for themselves. There was also an eminent political factor for this move. The striking of coinage was an expression of political authority and legitimacy, a claim that the UHC could not afford to ignore in the long run. When the UHC actually started uh, striking coins cannot at present be establish is established with any accuracy. From Soktia and Bactria, local groups of imitations are known, uh, which date from the late 2nd and early 1st century BC and circulated here in these uh, areas. Uh, they partly follow the model of the Greco-Bactrian coins issued by Eucratides I and Heliocles and can probably be assigned to the UHG. Uh, the above-mentioned horde of Kishtepe, which dates from the rule of the UHG in Bactria and contained 627 silver coins issued by the Seleucid, Bactrian and Indo-Greek kings on the Attic standard, already included quite a number of such imitations. Uh, in later times also numerous uh, he Heliocles copper coins uh, imitations, you see them here, were found during the course of the Franco-Uzbek excavations in Termes, that's, that is on the northern shore of the Amudaya uh, in southern uh, Uzbekistan. They are very common there. Uh, the the collapse of central Greek power in Bactria also seems to have been exploited by the local no nobility to display their own power, as attested by the issues of Sapatbices and Arzeles. Here is one of these half drams of Sapatbices, uh, which imitate the helmeted busts of Eucratides while bearing on the reverse a lion symbol of the Iranian goddess Nanaya. She is also mentioned here in the inscription left and right of the lion. The first Kushan prince to style himself expressly as such on his coins and also had his portrait put on them was a certain Heraios. However, it is de debatable whether this is a name or a title. Uh, Joe Cripp suggests that he is identical with Kuchula Katphysis. Her Heraios struck tetradrams and obols on the Attic standard in Bactria. Uh, his portraits are uh, a wonderful uh, sign of, of, of uh, the new power of the rulers, the, the hairstyle and the moustache uh, is typical of a, of, of a uh, nomadic ruler. And on the reverse, uh, you see uh, Raios on horseback, a type which is I imitated uh, from uh, the Gondofaris the dynasty, from the coins of Gondofaris uh, in Taxila. Uh, what is also striking uh, is the Greek inscription on these coins here, uh, where we have not only uh, the Greek Tyrannontos, which means ruler, 
uh, but also the Ethnicon Koshanu here written in the excerpt of, uh, of, uh, uh, of the coin. It's written with double row, you see it here, the two row, uh, because the letter Shin uh, d doesn't exist uh, in the Greek uh, script. Uh, the Greek title of a ruler is then later rendered in the Bactrian documents as Kar, that means also ruler. Uh, what is also striking are the parallels uh, which we find in the physiognomy uh, of the coins uh, of Heraios, uh, first in the early Kushan palace or temple of Kalchayan in southern Uzbe Uzbekistan, you see here, uh, these figurines uh, and uh, also uh, in the wonderful embroideries found in Noin Ula in Mongolia uh, in, in the tombs there. So here we have a clear uh, connection of, 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 of these uh, images. Um, just see here you have Kalchayan and on the other side we have Noin Ula. Uh, the first Kushan king, uh, whom we know by his name, is the already mentioned Kuchula Katphysis. We know him not only from his coins, but also from the famous Rabatak inscription, which was found in 1993 in Bactria, not far from the famous temple of Surk Kotal. And in this uh, inscription, Kuchula is mentioned as the great-grandfather of Kanishka the Great. Uh, the chronological framework of Kuchula's coinage covers the time from approximately 3040 to 1890 uh, CE. Uh, during, re uh, so, so, sorry. Uh, during uh, Kuchula's reign, uh, the exceptional findings uh, from Tiliatepe, a necropolis of nomadic aristocrats situated in the western corner of ancient Bactria can be date dated. But first of all, I show you here um, this uh, interesting coinage of, of Kuchola, probably uh, struck in Taxila with a portrait on the obverse which resembles uh, closely an early uh, Roman uh, portraits maybe of Tiberius. And on the reverse you see Kuchula enthroned to the right on the folding stool, which was also found in the tombs uh, of, Til of Tiliatepe, which I will show you later, and also these famous statues uh, from the temple of Karl Chayan. Um, <coughs> Uh, these uh, tombs from Tiliatepe were excavated by Viktor Saryanidin in the year before the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and are associated with the Scythians by Paul Bernard. Uh, besides the breathtaking golden artifacts which follow mainly nomadic tra traditions and here we can observe also strong connections to the Black Sea area, uh, but they also re reflect Hellenistic and Indian influences in their visual vocabulary. Uh, these tombs contained also the Chinese mirrors, an Indian gold me medallion, Parthian silver coins, and one Roman aureus, you see it here, of Emperor Tiberius struck in Lugdunum. From the nu numismatic point of view, the most spectacular object is the Indian medallion. You see it here. Uh, its images are regarded as the oldest representation of Buddha. Uh, the wheel of law, the Dharma Chakra, symbolizes Buddha's first sermon at Benares. The wheel is driven by a naked hero, probably Heracles, and the lion reflects Buddha's spiritual power. We may assume that uh, this Med medallion which definitely came from India. Uh, also the Roman aureus reached uh, Tilia Tepe via India. What is also of greatest importance is this golden imitation uh, of a Parthian coin of Gotarchis the first with a countermark. Mm -hmm. This countermark is associated with the area of Sistan, so with eastern Iran. 
uh, and, uh, and comes from the so-called Indo-Parthian or Gondofaris dynasty. But this is an, I I I this is an imitation uh, probably uh, pro produced locally in Bactria for funeral purposes. We can observe this custom late, late, later on uh, from Bactria via so Soktia far to China and especially in later times, uh, the, the especially the Byzantine solidi and, 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 and also the Sasanian drams were imitated for such funeral pur purposes. Um, <coughs> well, I think I have to come to an end. Uh, just uh, some uh, quick uh, views on the later Kushan coinage, uh, which changed then uh, from Kuchula uh, to Soter Megas, the so-called nameless king, uh, who introduced the uniform copper currency, which uh, was struck in Bactria and also south of the Hindu Kush. You see these coin types here. He goes back to uh, Greek legends on the reverse, king of kings, the great savior. On the obverse, you see on the, on the right hand side, the image of Mithra. Uh, and on the right hand side, uh, and probably the image of the king with a Macedonian helmet. Uh, uh, on the reverse, the king on horseback. Uh, later on, then we, haim, we, we, we have under Vimakadphysis the introduction of this extraordinary gold coinage of, of the Kushanas uh, with the enthroned king on the obverse and uh, uh, the I eastern Iranian god Oesho on the reverse. He goes back uh, to Greek legends on the obverse and Karoshti uh, uh, le legends on, on the reverse. What is most interesting here are these new titles which are suddenly come in discussion here. The great king of kings, the lord of the whole world, lord over the, the earth, uh, which is um, completely new uh, in this field. And finally, then we come to Kanishka the Great. Uh, uh, here you have an image of the so-called uh, of, of the Rab Rabadak inscription, which was found as already at the mentioned in 1993, uh, which is now in the Kabul Museum. Uh, here you see also the place where it was found, not far away from the temple of Surkutal, which <coughs> was also built by Kanishka the Great. Uh, what is interesting here that Kanishka starts first with purely Greek legends and then suddenly he switches uh, to Bactrian uh, and, and abandon the, the Greek uh, completely. And this is also mentioned in the Rab Rabatak inscription that where he tells us that he has introduced a new language which he calls Aryan. Uh, this is quite an interesting parallel also to the Achimenid uh, inscription of Darius the Great in Bizutun. Uh, yes, well, here we can skip. And this is the last image I would like to show you. On the right hand side, you see the famous temple of Surkotal in Bactria, which was built by Kanishka the Great. And on the left hand side, you see uh, his follower, Huvishka, kneeling in front of the, na of the goddess Nana. Uh, and this gives you an impression how the Kushan kings venerated their gods in their temples, like here in Surk Kotal. Thank you for it, it, your attention. I think it was a little bit too long. <laughs> mm. So I think you volunteered to entertain questions. And Absolutely. Right, uh, so I'm opening it up. Some, I know some people here in the audience they know a great deal about this. <laughs> Shall I? Um, could, could you uh, uh, clarify a little bit uh, uh, more distinctly? What were the myths of Bactria? Or do you know if there was more than one? Was Balk or Bactria the only myth in that country? Or did other cities possibly? even unidentified places also produce coins. Well, there. Bactra was certainly the main mint, but we also have a mint, especially in Seleucid times and during the reign of the, Gre Gre of the Greek kings in Achanum. Uh, 
Uh, and there seem to be also, especially during the time of the Greek kings, uh, some other subsidiary mints uh, in Bactria, but this is still a matter of debate, uh, how many mints uh, existed. Uh, but uh, Bactra and Iconum, I think this is for sure. And Bactra continues in striking coins. Uh, we have uh, the first uh, mint signature, which refers to Balch, to Bactra. We have uh, on the coinage of Vahram uh, I, uh, of the Sasanian uh, king, Vahram I. And then we have the complete mint name uh, on the Kushano Sasanian Skyfart gold din dinars where Bachlo is written in Bactrian on the obverse uh, of this coin, on, on, on some of these coins. And this gives a strong hint uh, that Bactra really was the main mint also of the Kushan kings. Uh, the problem is that we, of course, uh, with these Kushan gold coins of Kanishka and Huvishka, we only can group them according to some minor uh, pictorial elements and stylistic uh, considerations in, in two or three or more groups. And then we can say, well, according to some fine evidences, this might be north of the Hindu Kush and the others would be, let's say, in the area of Gandhara. But um, uh, for the Kushanas under Kanishka, we also have, I think, not more than two or three mints. One in north of the Hindu Kush in Balkh and the other one probably in Pushkalavati, which is near Peshawar in, in Gandhara. And this continues then, so we have the Bachlo inscription on the Kushano Sasanian dinars, uh, uh, date, dating to the 4th century. Uh, and then later on, it, it reappears on the on the heftalite uh, silver drums, which are Im imitating uh, the, the type of peros, of the Sasanian king per peros. And there su suddenly we also have Bachlo written on the reverse of these coins, uh, which clear clearly says that these coins were struck in Balch. And then after the uh, recapturing of Bactria by Khosro uh, the first, uh, we have coins of his followers, which we also have, the, of Ormas IV, which also have the mint mark of Balch. And probably, if we believe in, in Iraj Moshiri, uh, also in Kolm, which is also a, a, a city uh, more to the western, uh, to the eastern part uh, of Bactria. So that's, uh, that's the evidence we have. Thank you very much, Professor Ram. It's very fascinating. Um, could you give us the part of the lecture that you uh, destroyed, you decided not to talk about? <laughs> 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 could you continue? <laughs> yes, no, please, I'm, please. I'm just wondering, um, well, two quick questions. Uh, one, you mentioned that the coinage were, please correct me if I'm wrong, that local coinage predominantly. So I'm wondering what, what would be during the period that you're discussing, what would be the interconnections between this coinage and say the coinage of Marv, for instance, or, or the vicinities, regions to the, to the areas, dissemination of this coinage. That's one, and I really would like to know <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a serious question. Some, some, some remarks about what happens when the Sasanians come to power. Well, uh, this, that, that's a good question. Um, we know that uh, uh, the Sasanians started uh, to, to, to strike coins in, in northeastern Iran in the region of Marv during the reign of Ardashir I. Here we also have the accounts of Alta of Al Tabari, who says that uh, Ardashi on his eastern campaign came as far as Ho as as Khorezmia, but it's evident that that he started to strike bronze coinage in Merv. This is uh, clearly uh, demonstrated by the no numismatic evidence. Um, it. It continues in Merv then with Shapur the first, where we have the first gold coinage, also with the mint name of Merv uh, struck in this area. Uh, 
but it is still a matter of deb debate as to when the Sasanians then conquered uh, the Kushan Empire. Uh, and this, uh, well, some scholars think uh, that this happened as early as under Ardashir I and Shapur I, I don't think that this is correct. I think this must be later. Um, I don't think that uh, what, for example, Joe Cripp um, has had designated as, as uh, imitation coinage struck in the name of Vasudeva in Bactria uh, is under Sasanian rule. I think this, from my point, point of view, this is impossible when we think about how strongly Ardashir reorganized the whole Sasanian state that, that he allowed somebody to strike uh, Kushan coins in his em em empire. This is for me not uh, understandable. Uh, so uh, the Kushan or Sasanian co coinage in Bactria from my point of view starts as pro probably in the 270s to 280s with these earlier Ardashir bronze coins, which maybe have also a mint mark of Marf on the operas, um, as Martha Carter has shown. And, uh, but the, the, the real bunch of coinage then sh uh, starts with Peros, and this is in 290s or around 300, not, uh, not, not earlier. And then we have the, the whole series of Kushano Sasanian coinage consisting of gold coinage, of this Skyford gold dinars, uh, and the copper co coinage in the area of Bactria. And this ends then in the 370s uh, when the Kidarites, this is the first Hunnic tribe, uh, entered the uh, uh, Bactria and, and took over control from, from the Sasanians. But here it's, also, it's still a question if they took over, let's say, uh, the area peacefully uh, or uh, if, if uh, 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 under under violence. This is still not clear. But they then uh, started to continue this Kushan styled Ku Kushan or Sasanian gold sc sky for dinars. And, and this ends then only with a short interlude of the Sasanian king Peros, which also uh, took over this custom in striking these uh, sky for gold dinars. There, but we know to today I think just three examples of this coins, they are very rare. Uh, and then the Hunnic coins continue in this area with the Heftalites, which came after 484, and that ends then with Khosrow I, as I said. So it's uh, then a struggle al always between the Huns and, and, and the Sasanians, until the Arabs came on the scene. These early hordes, the, the one that Jonathan published and yeah. the, the Kabul hordes, um, clearly testify to the fact that, that coins were traveling a tremendous distance from you know, the eastern Mediterranean yeah. you know, all the way across this tremendous landmass to you know, Afghanistan. Um, I, I, f I find it really kind of perplexing why they didn't continue beyond that in a sense. I mean, what, what, what was there at the end of the road that marked the end of the road for these coins in a way? Why didn't they continue on into China or say, you know, on to India? Is there any idea you might have why they stopped there? Well, that's a good question, uh, which I can't answer, <laughs> I must say. Uh, and and uh, we also have to think think about that our knowledge about these hordes is is very very limited still today, mm -hmm. and and uh, each new horde can change our our uh, our, our pic picture immediately uh, as the Kiel court uh, b yeah. b before that was found uh, nobody thought that in these early times these these Greek coins tra traveled as far as 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 northeastern Iran uh, and then we have the Malayar horde which 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 dates I think nearly the same time span like 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 the Kabul horde and and or a little bit earlier uh, and the Baal horde and and um, so I can't say that. 
but but I would not be as astonished if we find Greek coins even further to the northeast uh, in Central Asia. That might be definitely possible, but so far we have no e evidence. There was recently there was found a hoard uh, in Gandhara of 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 these bent bar coins. I think about twenty or thirty bent bar coins coins and one Athenian tetradrum. Uh, from the fifth century. Please. Please. Thank you very much for this um, introduction, at least for me, for, um, for this coinage um, and, and this area. Yeah, you put up a slide of um, 20 drum pieces, yeah. I think, and I think you said that um, these were on a, on a local um, standard. Mm, no, uh, the, the, the 20 drum uh, pieces of were on the e on the Attic standard. Mm -hmm. no, this, uh, are, are, are you mean that the, 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 the 10 uh, dr drum p pieces of Amuntas, which were found in the Kundus hoard, they are based on the on the Attic standard, and and and. Or also the 20 drum gold piece of Eucratides is also based on the Attic weight standard, not on the local one. The local, the, in, the Indian one is much light, lighter, the, the, tet, the, the tetradrums are about 9.5 gram, while the Attic one is around six, 16 gram. But these are the, the, the biggest uh, coins we know from Hellenistic times. So these gold pieces really e exceptional and, and also these d decadrams from Amuntas are extraordinary pieces. So I think that many people want to hear that second part, but maybe we will um, let you go for this time and hope you come soon back. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I thank you.